So in this lesson I'm going to introduce you to ACD Chem Sketch. It is a chemistry drawing software package that you can download for free. If you Google something like ACD Chem Sketch Academic Freeware and look for the acdlabs.com website and open that, you'll be brought to their website and you'll find the download the free version here somewhere. And then install. So this is what it looks like. It's uh, very much the same as Microsoft Word in that it's page based. So you can add pages right now at the bottom. It shows I'm on page four of four. If I want to add more pages, I simply choose pages, new page, and so on. I can move between pages using this forward and back icon here. All right. I should tell you at the very outset there are basically two modes. There's a structure mode and the draw mode and the menus change accordingly so make sure you're in the right mode to follow the instructions here. Now you can zoom. Um, probably the easiest way is to hold down the control key and use the wheel mouse just like Microsoft Word. There are other modes here where you can choose fit all, well there's nothing to fit, page width, full page and so on. Then of course you can just select or type in any width that you want here. And you can zoom select on various objects. We'll do that as we go through it. Remember as we do this that control Z is undo. So we're going to start in the structure mode just to get us familiar with it a bit. Let me go to a previous page that will give me some prompts here. Okay. So let's choose File Page Setup. And here we have, uh, you can choose the letters or paper size, uh, width and height and orientation. Uh, you can set margin widths here. And I haven't really used the poster application, but uh, I, there is one there. If you go to the Options tab, you can choose to show a grid. If you wish these lightly dotted lines to help guide you in your drawings. Uh, you can also choose to snap to the grid or not. I don't particularly care for that myself. Uh, show palette is this color palette for objects down here. We'll show you that in a minute. And show RSS seems to be a scrolling banner at the bottom that provides live info from the ACD website. Here we have set uh, structured drawing style. We'll talk about this later elsewhere. If you go to the Preferences tab here, this is an important uh, dialog box for setting up basic parameters. So you can choose whether or not to view the ruler or the palette or the guides that we already looked at that. Here is an important one, the measurement units. I'm using inches in this particular application, but you could set it to points or centimeters as you wish. We could have guides to show the printable area on the screen and again different types of grids that you could choose make the grid visible, snap to grid or not, and the width and height of the grid. Informative cursor, tool tips, those are good. Try the structures tab. So here we have bond angles fixed. Uh, so probably every 10 or 15 degrees the bond angle will move between fixed increments which makes for tidy looking structures. You can always override that by holding down the shift key at any time. And here's the bond length. Now there's control for that elsewhere but here's the basic setting. White space. If you've ever had the experience where you've copied and pasted an image say from an application into Word and the edges are cut off then what you want to do is increase the white space around your object in your application and you should and you'll probably eliminate that issue. On the reactions tab you can choose your structures, what font and the size and the line widths and the distance between double and triple bonds, arrowheads and such. Now so many of these have uh, overrides elsewhere as well. I'm not familiar with some of these like the clean or biosequence or objects coloration. I haven't spent much time there but I think you could figure some of that out if 
looks fairly intuitive. Also, I see here ACD Labs, Setup Style, so you can choose your background color as you wish and say OK. All right, so let's go into the draw mode. Click on draw, and let's just draw a simple rectangle. I'll do it right here. Now, the color palette, if you left click, it gives you the fill color. If you right click, it gives you the border color, which I can't see. Let's right, right click on red so it's visible. There it is. Every structure, every text, every shape that you draw in ChemSketch is an object. And if you use the selection tool in the appropriate mode and double click on the object, it opens up a properties panel where you can adjust properties appropriate to that object. For example, we could change the width of the pen and then say apply. You can change the fill properties here. You can choose gradients, shadows, then you would click apply. You could save any style as a default or you can set it as a default or save it under some name and open up the style name later. So how do we type chemical formulas in ChemSketch like this formula for magnesium phosphate? Start by selecting the draw mode, choose the text tool. There are two options. There's regular text and artistic text. I can't really tell the difference. It's typed the same way as it is in Microsoft Word. Superscript is Control Shift equals to toggle that off, Control Shift equals again. Subscript is control equals, and control equals toggles it off again. If you've already typed something and want to change the superscript or subscript style, you could select it and then come up here to the menu bar. We have a superscript tool and a subscript tool here, but that's pretty tedious. If you know the keyboard shortcuts, that would be much quicker. Let's move to a blank page. So now we want to go to the structure mode, and on the left-hand side we have uh, Adam's toolbar and a periodic table. Let's start by clicking on the periodic table. Okay. If you click on any of these elements, it gives you information about the element. If you want to include one of these elements on your toolbar, you select it and say OK. And if you don't want it on the toolbar, you can click Cancel. Let's take a look at manganese because it has many oxidation states and say OK. And it's on the toolbar. By default, it's not there, but now it is. Now, I actually don't know how to remove it from the toolbar. It's changed from the previous version and I can't figure that out so if you know how please let me know. I just downloaded this version in July 2020 so it's the most recent version of ChemSketch but it does have differences from some of the previous versions that I haven't really worked out yet. In any case when you click on the element then click on the canvas it gives you manganese in one of its five oxidation states. If you come down here to the lower left corner it says increment charge. Now, notice there are different options here but I'm going to choose for cations and click on the manganese and notice it says it could be plus three. I click again plus four. I click again plus six. Notice that it skipped five because five is not a possible oxidation state for manganese and then seven then the element and then plus two and so it just cycles through the oxidation states. I'm going to delete that and move on to 
to delete something, you can each choose the selection tool here. This is select move, drag a selection box around it, and hit delete. Or at any time, you can go into the draw mode and then just click on the object and hit delete. Let's start here with carbon. Select it and click on the canvas once and it, it shows the hydride of the non-metal. So if you choose a non-metal it gives you the hydrides. If you choose a metal it gives you the cations. If you click on this a second time it gives you ethane. And a third uh, propane. It just keeps building in this fashion. So now we have neopentane. Before we go any farther we need to talk about showing carbons versus not showing carbons. So it's customary not to show carbons in rings and in advanced level chemistry we typically don't show any carbons at all. We use skeletal structures but in intro chemistry we like to show all our carbons and that's how I'm going to proceed in this tutorial. I want to show all my carbons except in the rings. Now to do that's a bit of a nuisance in this program I have to admit. If you choose the selection tool and you can select the whole structure and double click on it it will open up the properties panel for the atoms. Now there's different tabs here but the one you want to look at is the common tab. So by default the setting is to show all carbons. Because all carbons are shown then in fact as I add more carbons everyone's shown. Let's say I wanted to show just the terminal carbons. So I'd have to unselect all and select terminal. Now I have to use set default. That'll change everything from this point forward. So watch the difference now. Notice that only the terminal carbons are shown. If I want to apply this to an existing structure, I'd have to select the structure and hit apply. Now to select a structure, it's easy if you go into the draw mode and just click on it and you can easily drag and separate without distorting it. And then go back to the structure mode. Let's select this molecule on the left and now we'll apply our style to it. And so it just shows terminal carbons only. I think I'll undo that, Control Z. So it gets a little strange when we want to work with rings. Let me get rid of this structure here. Actually, let's get rid of both of them. All right, so if I choose to say don't show any carbons, we'll set that as default. Over here on the right, I have a selection of rings. Let's try a cyclopentane ring, and it shouldn't show any carbons because I told it not to. I set that as a default and that's good. And by the way, notice it's ready to paste another ring. Just right click or, or hit escape to cancel that. Now the issue I have here is now I want to show the carbons attached to the ring. So I might try something like this. Select all and set it as default. But watch what happens. I think I should be seeing terminal carbons and I don't. So it appears that the properties of the ring override the settings here. So the only way I can find to go around this is to draw the ring, attach the carbons I want, and then select those terminal carbons and modify them afterwards. So the way around this is to use a selection tool and select those carbons. And then you can apply and that works this is awkward. Uh, in the previous version, I would have all my rings pre-drawn and I never had to draw a ring again. I left my settings such that all carbons were turned on and I simply would drag a copy of the ring into the page and then add my carbons to it. But in this newer version, somehow the properties of the ring overrides the current setting. So this is the only way I can find to do that. If you have a better way, please let me know. Notice the size calculation area of this dialog box. The atom symbol size and the bond length are coupled when the auto is selected. So notice right now I have size 10.28 inch bond length. If I decrease say to 9 
atom symbol size, it also decreased my bond length by 0.25. So uh, likewise, if I were to increase the atom symbol size to 11, it would increase the bond length. They're in proportion to each other. If you want to unlink them so that you can vary them independently, just unselect auto. So we have here some preset styles, like one for the ACS, one for the RSC, Royal Society of Chemistry, and so on, the Canadian Journal of Chemistry. By selecting these, it'll set up your fonts accordingly. You can save your own style. For example, maybe I want to have a font size of 9, and I'll unselect Auto here, and perhaps I want a little bigger bond length. I'll turn this back on. I want to show all carbons. The rest looks OK. What I can do here is type in a new name, all carbons, Arial 9, bond length 0 0.24, whatever you want to call it, and then say save. Once you've saved your style, you can retrieve it from the list. I believe this is it here. And then you can set it as a default for future use. You can apply it to existing structures. Let's see what it does to this structure. So I'm going to select these carbons and I'll click apply. There's my new style applied. Henceforward my new style will be applied to all structures. So you need to get comfortable with this part of it to survive in ChemSketch. So with all carbons selected let's draw some carbon chains. I'll just get rid of this one right here. I click once with carbon selected, twice a third time, and let's put a branch here. Now, what I can do is choose this Set Bond Vertical tool, and then click on a bond, and arrange the shape as I wish. Let's draw some more carbons. Now you can direct which way they're going to go just by dragging a bit before you release it. I see my bond lengths are too short. So what can I do for that? Well, let's go into our style and increase our bond lengths. I'll set that as a default. Uh, apply it to the structure. That looks better. All right, so I'm using nine size nine font and 0.3 inch bond length. Add a few more carbons. When you hover over a carbon, you see this hitbox appear. If you click and drag to a neighboring carbon, it'll close a ring. It doesn't look very good, but if you choose to clean up the structure, if you want a double bond, just click on the bond with the carbon tool selected. Wait to see the hitbox. Click once as a double bond, click again as a triple bond, and back to a single bond. Let's say you want to add a substituent to one of the carbons. Let's add a fluorine. So select fluorine. Notice that if you click on one of the carbons, it replaces the carbon with a fluorine. That may not be what you wanted. And if it isn't, choose to undo. So this time, click, but don't release the mouse, but rather drag out or up or down in some direction and release, and this sprouts a fluorine from it. Let's undo that. I'll show you another way to do that. We've been using what's called the Draw Normal tool. If you do the Draw Continuous tool, it behaves a little differently. Now, with fluorine selected, I click once, and it highlights it. Click a second time, and it sprouts a fluorine. Again, you could control the direction by dragging. I'll put that fluorine back on and show you something a little different. So we've been using the Select Move tool. So you can drag a box and move it or select it. With the next tool here, this is called the Select Rotate Resize tool. So you can certainly select with it, but then you 
hover the cursor over it and notice that the cursor has changed to a two-way arrow and this red circle is the point around which I can rotate this structure like so this is 3D rotation so if I just get a basic wireframe I can see the 3D rotation of the molecule 3D optimization tool, try that. Shows you all the bonds in a 3D rotation. Kind of a nice feature. ChemSketch has a variety of pre-drawn structures called templates. So from the structure mode, choose templates, template window. Here's a partial list of the groups of templates Here's a more complete list. You can select anything from here and it will be added to the list on the left. Let's start with amino acids. Notice that there are several pages of amino acids. I'll go back to the first page. I want to select alanine. Notice when I hover the cursor over different parts of the molecule, there's different attachment points. It doesn't really matter where I start. I'll just take the central carbon and click on it. I have then an outline hovering over the canvas with my mouse. Before you click, press the tab key and notice you can rotate the structure to deposit the way you want. Then I'll click on the canvas. So there's my structure of alanine. Notice the mouse is ready to paste another copy as soon as I click again. Now to cancel that you just have to press escape or right click. But before I do that I want to show you how you can join these together. If I hold this methyl group over the oxygen and click it, notice that the oxygen replaces the methyl group. Let's go Control Z. To just recall what that did. The methyl group was replaced by the oxygen. I'm going to go Control Z and I'll right click to cancel this. Let's go back into templates. We'll get another structure of alanine. This time I'm going to click right on the methyl group. Instead of the central carbon, click on the methyl group. Now notice when I click on the oxygen, the methyl group is not replaced, rather it's attached to it. Let's go Control Z to undo. This time hold down the Shift key and click on the oxygen. Now as in the first case, the oxygen replaces the methyl group. There's a lot of functionality here. That it could save you a lot of time if you invest some time to get used to it. I'm going to delete this. If I go to the draw mode, click anywhere on the structure, the whole object can be easily deleted by clicking the delete key. Select a carbon and put one carbon on the page, methane. On the right hand side we have some rings and above that we have a table of radicals. So if you hover over you'll see many different pre-drawn radical groups. Let's try the nitro group for example. Again, there's an outline on the canvas showing that this is ready to be connected to whatever I attach it to. Let's connect it to the carbon and click and notice now I have nitromethane. Very convenient. ChemSketch has quite a nice nomenclature tool in it and let's illustrate that. So we need to draw a structure first. Draw a carbon and we'll put three carbons in a row. four carbons in a row. I would like a hydroxyl group on the second carbon. Just drag up a bit. I'd like a bromine on the third carbon from the left here. And I would like a carbonyl OH on the far right. There. So I have a carboxylic acid. This will be carbon one, two, three. They should be 2-bromo, 3-hydroxy, butanoic acid. Let's see how that names it. So if I select this, it can be either in the draw mode or the structure mode. And right up here, this says generate name for structure. 2-bromo, 3-hydroxy, butanoic acid. It's pretty handy. It names structures with up to 10 or 20 carbons, so it's, it's reasonably good if you want to purchase the full version, of course, it would 
do many more. I should warn you that ChemSketch selects between any of three different nomenclature systems when naming uh, Chem Abstracts, IUPAC, or Common. And so sometimes you might see a name that looks unfamiliar. It might just be that it chose to name it in one of those systems you're not familiar with. ChemSketch forces us to draw correct chemical structures, correct number of bonds, correct charge and such, but there are times when we want to override that. For example, in drawing a transition state of a molecule. So there's a tool that's really important for doing it. It's called the Edit Atom Label Tool. I'm going to attach something non-standard to this methyl group. So I'm going to select that Edit Atom Label Tool, click on the carbon, and then I have this dialog box and I can type in whatever I wish to put in. Three methylene groups, followed by a phenyl group. Check that the formula style is selected so that it will automatically subscript numbers for you. Once you have what you want in there, just click insert and now I have a non-standard alkyl group attached. On the second page of my drawings, I want to show you another example. This is a t-butyl anion. How can we draw something like that? Let's start by drawing isobutane and then we'll work from there. So I'm going to choose, I'm in the structure mode, choose a carbon. Now I want these wedge-shaped bonds to give me a three-dimensional look to it. So this is the widening wedge. Hold down the shift key as you drag to control the length of that. For bonds that are in the plane of the page, I want a straight line. That'll be the standard bond tool. Again, I'm holding down the shift key to exaggerate the length. I also want this narrowing wedge. I see this one's backward. We'll fix it. So choose this hashed bond tool and drag out. Now I really want that to get smaller, so click on it and it will reverse. There it goes from large to small. Now I want to remove this hydrogen and have a pair of electrons so I get a t-butyl anion. I'm going to use this increment charge, but I want to use the negative sign here. Click on the carbon. The hydrogen is eliminated and we have this carbanion. I'd like to show that there's a non-bonded pair of electrons in an sp3 hybridized orbital. So let's get the orbital and that's under templates, template window, and we have orbitals. And it looks like I could use this one here looks good. I'll paste that on the canvas. I can rotate that here. It looks like I can maybe shrink that a bit and deposit that right up here. I need a non-bonded pair of electrons. So in the templates window, there are two places you can find them. One is under Lewis structures. There's some non-bonded electrons here. Just select and drop it on the page. Also, under reaction symbols, there are some non-bonded electrons, a little smaller. Of course, you could resize these at any time if you wanted to. I generally keep some in the corner of my page and simply drag and drop as I need. Now, since I drew these last, they will be on top. But in the event that they were hiding behind, you can always select an object and choose to uh, send to back or bring to front, vice versa. Once you've got your structure assembled, you might want to select it all and then group it here. That way it can move without falling apart. You can do the same for a t-butyl cation. What about drawing a structure that looks three-dimensional like this? So I've drawn a cyclohexane ring. I want to rotate it so it sits flat. I could use the Select, Rotate, Resize tool for that. Remember, hover until you see the two-way arrow, and then rotate until it looks about right. 
Okay, now I want to make it look like it's laying on its back or somewhat flat. So I'll just choose the Select Move Tool and grab one of these handles and shrink it down. Now for some reason this bond width looks really small, but let's show you how to adjust that. If you select this and double click to open the Properties dialog box here under Bond, I notice for some reason the bond width is only 0.2 points. Let's try 0.5 and say Apply. That looks pretty good. All right, we want to make these wedge bonds so it looks like they're coming out of the plane of the page. I'm going to hold down the Shift key so I can drag these to the length I want. Now I'll need to attach a chlorine here. I want a bromine on the right with a wedge bond. I'll drag up and hydrogens down below. piece of cake. I'd like to show you how to draw a reaction mechanism in ChemSketch. So we'll look at the reaction of ammonia with water producing ammonium hydroxide. And to save time I've already drawn some of that here. So the plus sign you could type it in as text in the draw mode if you wish. Here's the text box. Just type and when you click away it closes. Uh, the other option is there is a plus sign in the structure mode right here. You can use that as well. We we'll want a reaction arrow. Let's go back to the draw mode. So I'll choose a straight line with an arrowhead and hold down the shift key to control the length. There's my reaction arrow. I want to have these curved arrows to show the movement of electrons. They are dicey to make in ChemSketch. So for that I can choose one of the curves that looks like it might work. Just kind of a guess. And make sure you attach an arrowhead at the same time. Okay, It's backwards so come back to the beginning and start again. And that looks a little excessive, doesn't it? All right, let's undo that. We'll try a different arrow. That's true. Something with less curvature. The nitrogen is the electron donor. That looks better. I need another curved arrow to show the transfer of the bonded pair of electrons to become the non-bonded pair of electrons on the oxygen. For that, I'll need a fairly tight arrow. Looks like perhaps that one. Remember to select the arrowhead at the same time. and that might work. Looks pretty squashed. Take the selection tool and drag that out and hopefully that'll shape reasonably well. That's good. Okay. So I have ammonium hydroxide on the right hand side. Uh, if I'd like to put this in parentheses there is a brackets tool here. For the hydroxide, I need some non-bonded electrons. Usually keep some at the ready and drag copies as needed. Okay, so that's not real pretty, but it works. ChemSketch has a pretty good selection of glassware clip art that will help you writing up lab reports or procedures. So that's in the draw mode under the templates group you'll find a lab kit. So there are several pages of glassware and apparatus here. For example let's say I want to show a dilution so I'll choose a volumetric flask and paste it. Remember right click cancels. I'll resize this. I'll drag a copy and resize this one. And so I need a one of my curved arrows here with an arrowhead 
so I can show a volumetric dilution taking place. We can draw some complicated curves using the polyline tool. Here it is. It takes some practice. I'm not good at it. So click, but don't let go of the mouse, and then drag horizontally. Now when you release the mouse, move it upwards and you get the front end of a curve. Then click and hold the mouse down and move it horizontally again. Depending how far you go, you widen the curve or make it narrower. I'm going to release the mouse and drag back down. And don't worry if it's not perfect, you can fix it later. Drag horizontally. And down again, drag horizontally. When you're finished, double click kind of crazy. Now you can edit this. So with it selected there's this edit nodes tool. So you can move any of these and reshape it at any time afterwards. I don't think I'm going to make this any better. Yeah, so you get the idea. It's a pretty good tool if you're familiar with using it. I notice there's some new features with it. If I select this, it's a fill tool. Um, add a node, subtract a node. Let's see, I can add nodes to it. Hmm. Looks interesting. Straighten that up. Maybe I could rotate this. There's my rotation. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so you can do a lot with the polyline tool and uh, I'll leave it with you to explore. One nice feature about ChemSketch is its 3D viewer. So I've drawn the structure of a molecule with a few functional groups in. And we can view this in 3D. So you need to select the molecule. You can either be in the draw mode or structure mode. It makes no difference. And then choose right here, 3D viewer. All right. so. This is not the correct structure, but if we select right here, this is 3D optimization. Gives us correct bond lengths and bond angles. And by default, I see we're in the wire frame view. You can choose different views. This is the stick view. Here's ball and stick, space filling, and there's an electron cloud filling, looks like. All right, a little bit small. Can we increase the size of this? resize. All right, that's about as big as I can seem to make that. Let's uh, rotate that manually a little bit. 3D rotate. I don't care for those colors. Let's see if we can modify that. Here under set colors, the hydrogen will make it yellow. Let's say OK. carbon. And we'll make that maybe a light gray silver color and say OK. That looks better. And why not the fluorine? Let's make it a little more colorful. How about cyan? Uh, I'd like to have it display the atom symbols. Under view, label all. Looks better still. Here's a feature that allows us to auto rotate and change styles. One of the features I'm not real fussed on is that double bonds aren't really indicated. So the carbonyl should be a double bond, but it would be nice if double bonds and triple bonds were indicated as such. Otherwise, it's quite a nice little feature. So that's probably long enough for an intro to ChemSketch, and I hope that was helpful.